Uh, well, welcome. Uh, I'm Dr. Furlong. Welcome to our third Facebook Live event. Uh, we're happy that you're with us. We're going to make this uh, informative and interactive. Uh, please feel free to uh, forward your questions in like you've done before. If this is your first time joining, uh, we'll kind of go through a little bit about what our program will be. It's only 15 minutes, so it shouldn't take too much of your time. Um, as many of you know, I have been a sponsor of the San Jose Earthquakes for many, many years. Uh, and I really support the team. I love going to the games. And today we got a special guest on Facebook Live, one of their players. Uh, this is midfielder Shea Salinas, and he's joining us today to talk a little bit about laser eye surgery. As since he's a patient, I'm a patient as well, but we want to be able to answer and address some questions. Welcome. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm excited. Yeah, you're welcome. So um, the main thing we want to talk about today is there's more than one kind of laser eye surgery. Um, most of you have heard of the term LASIK, and LASIK implies that we're doing a laser correction to get rid of your nearsightedness or astigmatism. Uh, and the alternative to LASIK that we sometimes must use is something called PRK laser eye surgery. They're very, very similar. Uh, they give very similar results, but Shay had PRK surgery about eight years ago. I had LASIK surgery longer than that, about 17 years ago, and we're going to talk a little bit about some of the differences. So we welcome you to forward your questions in because we're going to, we have a few already uh, sent to us that we want to answer, and then as you send them in, we can address live questions as well. So uh, let's go ahead and take our first question. Okay, here it is. Will my optometrist know which procedure will work for me, or do I need to come in for a consultation with you, Dr. Perlon? So um, finding out what you're a good candidate for involves uh, an ex examination of your eyes with some basic readings, and then we uh, get some more detailed analysis um, as we determine what your candidacy is. So your optometrist in all likelihood will know whether you're a good candidate uh, in the vast majority of cases because they've got your history, they've got your prescription, and they know a little bit about your eyes. Um, so they will also send you in for some detailed analysis so we can kind of talk a little bit about what your, uh, what your specific um, type of procedure would, that would work best for you. Uh, but in most cases, we can, we can determine that with your eye doctor. Um, I did want to touch a little bit just about the differences between uh, the advanced bladeless LASIK surgery, which is, you know, the common procedure, but PRK as well. And I did bring a little bit, hopefully this doesn't reflect against the screen, but I did bring a little bit of a diagram. Most people don't know this, but with LASIK, what we're doing is we're making a little flap on the cornea. We do these with lasers now instead of blades, so it's much safer than it was years ago. Um, we use a, a different type of laser to get rid of your prescription, and then the flap that we've created just seals back uh, very, very quickly without any um, uh, delay or recovery. And patients who have this surgery, usually the next day are seeing well enough to drive and work. The alternative to this, which is what Shea had, um, is called advanced PRK. And the, the biggest difference is we don't create a little flap on the cornea. We just do all of the laser work right on the surface. Um, the actual surgeries are identical. They take about 10 minutes for both eyes, so it doesn't take very long. The biggest difference is there's a little bit of a slower recovery with PRK, and in some patients, this is a safer choice. So I will be determining that when you come in for your measurements. Let's go ahead and, uh, and uh, field another question. Okay, is there any advantage to having PRK rather than LASIK? So PRK and LASIK are, as I said, very similar, and the results are the same. So there's no advantage to having PRK over LASIK or LASIK over PRK with regard to your results. But some patients um, don't qualify for LASIK, and that's the catchword we've all heard. And if we tried to do LASIK on everybody, some patients would not do well. So that's what my training comes in, and I'm able to determine what you might be a good candidate for. So in those patients, I may recommend one procedure over the other, and then we counsel them as to what the recovery might be like, how it might differ, but knowing that the results are going to be just the same. Yeah, and that's, that's how, what my experience was. You kind of gave me the pros and cons of both and said PRK is uh, probably the better choice for you. Um, given my cornea thickness and things like that. So uh, that's what we went ahead and went with is a PRK yeah. and turned out great. Yeah, and that's and I also get a question frequently, which is, is PRK older than LASIK? It's not as advanced, and that's not true. Um, when we use lasers, we use the exact same laser. 
The question is, with PRK, do we do it on the surface of the eye? Mm -hmm. Or with LASIK, do we use a flap technique which speeds up the recovery and the healing? You brought up a good point. There are some people who are just born with corneas that are thinner mm -hmm. than others, and there is a limit to how much uh, corneal surgery can be done. If we leave somebody's cornea too thin, that can be a big problem. So I don't recommend a surgery that would put somebody at risk. In Shay's case, because his corneas were a little on the thin side, I counseled him to doing PRK in the off-season when he had right. a little bit more recovery time so that he would eventually get the exact same level of vision, but it would be a safer approach for him. Here's another question. Are the vision results of PRK and LASIK the same? Yeah, question is about vision results and, and when... Adam, by the way. Hi, uh, thanks for sending the, uh, the uh, question in, Adam. Years ago, we used to quote a slightly different percentage, but with today's advanced laser technologies, our current results are 98% of the time with LASIK or PRK, both using advanced technology, we'll get 20-20 vision or even better. In fact, with our, with our most recent version of the technology, about two-thirds of patients get 20 over 15 vision, and with our topography-guided techniques, which we've been doing now for about six months, about a third of patients are getting 20 over 12 vision, which is actually really cool because this is level of vision that most people have never seen. So if you've worn glasses or contacts, the doctor says, oh, you can read the 2020 line. They usually stop there. They don't push you and get you to see even smaller letters. Well, we now have the ability to measure vision even lower than the 2020 and 2015 lines. And a third of patients are getting down there, which is great. That's it's phenomenal. Like HD TV, 4K it, it, television right there. It kind of is. And it makes me always think of that movie years ago, because I'm old now, as Top Gun, where these guys had to have like mm -hmm. 20 over 10 vision, right, naturally occurring. And so... We're excited about that because we're able to offer our patients that level of uh, technology and hopefully that level of vision. And I had my surgery several years ago and the technology has gotten better since then. And I had 2015 um, right after surgery, which was pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. And especially what, in what you do, right? I mean, you were used to wearing contact lenses when you played. Now that part is gone. Yeah. So, and yeah. it's just seeing the clock in the morning and uh, without having to put any glasses or contacts on was amazing. Yeah, very cool. <laughs> So there's a question for you, Shay. How okay. do you think having PRK has affected your playing? Yeah, it's it's affected my soccer life uh, majorly. Um, just contacts while you're running and playing soccer, they dry out, they move, they shift. Um, so your vision's constantly kind of in flux, changing. Um, so once I got the surgery, that was no longer a problem. I think my peripheral vision was great as well after that. Um, so being able to see teammates without having to pick my head up as much was nice. Um, and then just my lifestyle change as well, not having to put on contacts or glasses. Uh, um, especially at night, the transition period between taking your contacts off and going to bed. It's like, do I put my glasses on? And, uh, things like that. So that was nice, just getting rid of all that. So it definitely changed my lifestyle. Excellent. So Sarah wants to know kind of specifically what is PRK? I don't know if you've got anything that you can... So uh, PRK is, is an acronym just like LASIK, and PRK stands for photorefractive keratectomy. It sounds like it's a big mouthful, but photorefractive just means we're using a laser photo. Refractive means changing the shape of the cornea. And when you're nearsighted, your cornea is a little too steep. This is a too steep of a curvature for the rest of the dimensions of your eye. So there's a mismatch, and that's why glasses and contacts work well. It changes that mismatch by, ch by bending light rays. And so we just use the fact that we can use this laser, which can be so precise on the sub-micron level, to resurface your eye to give you a new corneal shape that is more ideal for the, the rest of your eye anatomy. LASIK works the same way in that we're changing the shape of the cornea. The biggest difference is just where on the eye we do that. Is it right on the surface or do we create a corneal flap and laser underneath that, uh, that um, uh, surface of the flap to put it back down into position? And it's just a recovery difference, but it's good news for patients out there who have been told. I, I actually saw a patient last week who said, yeah, I've been to the eye doctor. They said I can't have LASIK. And I said, oh, okay, well, let me take a look at your eyes. And we, we determined the reason that they were told that years ago is because their corneas were thin. And back then, we used to kind of freak out and say, nah, your corneas are too thin for any kind of surgery. But there's enough data now supporting that PRK is a safe approach for many of those patients. So she's now a candidate, whereas 10 years ago, she wasn't. So, Shay, talk a little bit about your experience here with Dr. Furlong and, you know, the whole actual surgery and having that done. 
Yeah, I came in about eight years ago, um, and it was just really smooth. All the cool testing machines, you get to test your eyes and see the thickness and what your vision is and things like that. Um, and then I sat down with Dr. Furlong, and he gave me my options and the pros and cons of each. Um, and then we scheduled the surgery, and the surgery was amazing. Come in in the morning, um, took about 10, 15 minutes, if that, and then uh, had someone drive me home and got to recover. The recovery for the PRK, like you said, is a little longer, um, but you wear a little protective lens that helps and things like that. Um, and then within about a month, I was seeing perfectly and everything was great. Um, I know LASIK, it's like within 24 hours, PRK is a little different. Um, so I got to see perfectly and uh, that's just been an amazing experience. And then coming in for checkups and everything has just been really easy and smooth. And you've been great, very personable and easy to talk to and accessible, which has been nice. And you're a fan, is that correct? Yeah, I do go to probably a third to the half of the home games every year. Um, I have kids that love soccer and play. And so for us, it's, a, it's an event out. We get to go and have fun, watch the team play and compete. Avaya Stadium's awesome if you haven't mm -hmm. been there. It's an awesome venue to see a soccer game. And we've been there for, for other games, too. In fact, a buddy of mine who coaches rugby went to a big rugby, rugby tournament that they had at the stadium as well. So great venue. I'm a fan. I love going to the games. Can't wait for the season to start. We're, I think, about six weeks away. Yeah, it's close. Preseason starts Monday. And then our yeah. first game is March 4th, I believe. Excellent. Good. Yeah. Okay, I have another question. So will I be a candidate for PRK if I have a sticky? Stigmatism. Yeah, stigmatism comes up a lot. Um, astigmatism is a, one of the vision focusing problems like nearsightedness. It's just different and glasses and contacts fix that. So we oftentimes get the question, yeah, I've been told I have this thing called astigmatism and I can't do laser eye surgery. Well, not only is that not true, you can do either LASIK or PRK in the vast majority of cases. The kicker is knowing how much astigmatism and what it looks like when we measure your eyes. So then the other question is, how, how does that all work when I come in for consultation? What, what, do, you, what do I have to go through mm -hmm. to... Yeah, so we, we, it's pretty straightforward. You'll come in. It's about an hour of your time. Um, if you're wearing your contacts, we have you pop them out. We do some readings, and then we sit down and talk. We look at the results of your testing, and then we're able to determine pretty quickly what you might be eligible for. At that point, you get to decide if you want to move forward, and, and as you know, this is elective, but we'll give you an idea of what the cost will be, what the process is like, what the timing is like, and then leave it up to you to decide if the time is right for you. Um, it's an exciting, uh, you know, life-changing event for the vast majority of my patients. I know I, was, I love helping the, the athletes that we uh, come into contact with, with the Earthquakes organization, and if you are tired of having to deal with your glasses and contacts, come in. We'll be happy to see you. And you have financing options, is that right? We do have financing options um, as well. It's a, it's a, it's a, not a cheap procedure, but it's a lifelong benefit. So we want to make it as affordable as possible, and we'll look at all options for you. You also never have to buy contacts and contact solution and glasses, which helps. That's a good point. <laughs> and there's a, at some point, there's a break-even period, which they yeah. figure is about four years of, of having to buy contact solutions, mm -hmm. glasses. At that point, you're better off. Mm -hmm. Thanks for attending. I think this is going to be the end of our Facebook Live event. Um, we'll still answer follow-up questions if you do submit them even after the broadcast, so we'll uh, get to those shortly. Thanks for attending, and look forward uh, to doing one of these in the near future. And we'll see you at Avaya Stadium soon. There you go. <laughs>